Hey everybody, this is Mercenary93, and today we're going to be playing some Hearts of Iron 4. Uh, Wonderful. I'm joined here by Jake, and all the way in the... Other side of the, the cramped room, the about corner. four feet away. The other two are doing what? their thing. What? I'm recording you, Goober! Oh. Say hi. Rock. Uh, goodbye? That's the wrong one. Okay, Damn. anyways. You failed me. Anyways, and we're going to be playing some Hearts of Iron 4. Now, I've been doing a lot of uh, thinking about what nation to play as, uh, you know. Especially for a decent playthrough. Yeah. And I figured that the best fit for the job has to be the one and only Italy. So we're going to be starting on January 1st, 1936. The Gathering Storm. Dark times are coming in Europe. Hitler has consolidated his power and his attention is now increasingly drawn beyond Germany's borders. Mussolini's Italy is, continues to embark on daring military adventures, while the Empire of Japan stands poised to attack China and Asia. Almost 20 years have passed since the end of the Great War, and the world has yet again been doused in gasoline. A single spark may be all it takes. So we're going to be playing as Italy, led by Benito Mussolini. Uh, we're obviously fascist, a totalitarian regime. Uh, we don't have elections. And but we do have good pizza. Exactly. The Neapolitans, the best. <laughs> and we're led by the uh, Partizo Nazionale Fascista, um, which coincidentally um, allows us to send volunteer forces. Um, and also it makes it much, much easier to uh, fabricate claims against enemy countries. <clears throat> Ugh, excuse you, Jake. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, encompassing a variety of ultranationalist movements, fascism typically venerates a devotion to the state and uniting the people under a strong leader. Uh, we have the traits of Vittoria Multitata. Uh, essentially, it makes fa other fascists uh, like us and anyone else hate us. Uh, it also makes it easier for us to fabricate claims. It also gives us uh, an offensive modifier. Our allies betrayed Italy and stabbed us in the back when they broke the Pact of London. We sacrificed so much blood at the Isonzo for their victory, and they in turn denied us what was ours by right. Now Italy will take her destiny into her own hands and ensure that justice is done. We also have Vittorio Emmanuel III. The soldier king reminds the Italians of their recent victories in the Great War. His presence and their loyalty to him is a great source of unity for the people. Uh, this gives us quite a bit of national unity, which is incredibly important. Yeah. <laughs> so, a brief history. Uh, with the rise of fascism, Italy has entered a new glorious era. Its forces are currently in the process of adding Ethiopia to the growing Italian colonial empire, but Mussolini's ambitions do not stop there. Dominion over the Mediterranean has always been Italy's destiny, and a new order of things is taking shape in Europe. When the tidal wave of change arrives, Italy must find a place at the crest, or risk being swept away. Alright. So, we're going to play on a regular difficulty, uh, we're going to do historical AI focuses. I'm not going to do Iron Man mode because I have mods on, uh, it's mostly just graphical mods, but mods nonetheless. Yeah. Two days into the... Uh, uh, when, when was this game released? Uh, the 6th. 6th, yeah. Hasn't even been 10 days, and already good mods. Yeah, there are a <laughs> lot of good mods. Uh, boy. Alright, so at the game we got some things to take care of. So first, our technology. Always go for a land doctrine. You always need to be researching a land doctrine no matter what. Um, same goes for industry. You want to get your industry as high as possible. I like to go for engineering as well. Uh, gives us easy access to radar. Which is super important. And we're going to start researching heavy tanks. We have some factories that we can uh, construct, so... Thinking of uh, constructing some military factories, we're definitely going to need them. Get some here, some there, a couple there, and some there. All right. Ah. All right. So. Gonna set our factory prerequisites. Gonna get rid of this. We don't need to do two at a time. All right. I'm gonna set all. all efficiency here. I'm gonna the, the Italian totalitarian regime. Gonna set um, all my harbors to just constructing battleships, just because they take so long to build. Um, but they are very powerful and very worth it, aren't they? Definitely. 
Uh, the only things that are arguably better are carriers, but we don't have those researched yet. Um, let's yeah, we see. don't have the, uh, the science yet. We gotta find a couple more uh, wonder, wonders of the world. <laughs> Alright. Now shall focus. So, this is um, a bit different from the technology tree. This is the national focus tree. Um, essentially, we will always be able to uh, study these, uh, and if I remember correctly, they all take the same amount of time, 70 days. So, first off, we're going to start with Ethiopian War Logistics. Um, this will essentially put us on a path to help improve our industry. Next, we need to assign tasks for our uh, airplanes. So, I'll just go ahead and assign them to various locations. Actually, I'll put you guys in the Balkans. Okay. Put you guys in the Balkans. Alright, naval bomber, I'll put you in the Adriatic. Sink ships. Let's see if we can reach the Balkans. We can. Uh, not this fighter, though. Alright, I'll just have him uh, patrol Italy then. I have you guarding North Africa. And then I'll have you guys. Provide support in Ethiopia. All right. Next, All right. time to start training soldiers. So, let's get out of airplane mode. So first we're going to be training some just normal infantry divisions. Three, three sets. Get one going in Napoli. One going in Roma. And another in Firenze. Alright. We're going to be training some tanks as well. Got to get those going in Bologna. I forgot to set a right. location. Uh, and finally we'll get some mountaineers going in Milano. And I'll have five of each going at once. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Alright. And lastly, I want to add transports to my construction queue. And move them up on the priority list. Alright, below tanks. Alright. Now, lastly, just need to organize my armies. Order. All right. Have you guys on the Yugoslavian border? Assign a uh, Pietro Badoglio to you, and I'm gonna. Smart guy. Uh, eh, this guy's <laughs> all right, eh. but uh, this guy Giovanni Miss is really good. He's a skill for general, and he's Ooh. also a Panzer leader. Uh, essentially, gives buffs to tanks. Uh, however, I am going to promote him, unfortunately. So, there's a difference between there are two types of uh, leaders: there are generals and field marshals. Uh, generals, uh, the main difference between the two is the types of traits that they can get and also uh, how many troops that they can lead. Generals can only lead 24 regiments, whereas uh, field marshals can just lead an unlimited amount. Um, I'm going to make this guy like my most important general, like my main general. So I'm going to promote him. That'll put him down a rank to skill 3 and also get rid of his Panzer leader bonus, but he'll still be better than all my other generals. 
So you're going to promote him for... I'm going to promote him to a field marshal. So he'll okay. be, be able to lead unlimited amounts of troops. And with the... But he still is not your top general. So. Yeah, he's still incredibly better than all my other generals. So I'll just draw out an offensive line. To give him buff. You guys need to go here so that we can start planning a naval invasion of Yugoslavia. We'll go to it's nice that we have stuff down there as well. Yeah. yeah. The African front is going to be really important, especially since we're playing as Italy. Yeah, of course. Alright. So now... Wow, we... <laughs> We really got the advantage on Ethiopia, don't we? Yeah, uh, Ethiopia doesn't stand a chance against us. Uh, they're pretty much doomed. So well, it's for the better. Exactly. Alright, we'll send you guys to this front. You guys to that one. Alright. Next, let's just draw some offensive lines. There we go. Draw some for you guys. And I'll assign uh, Sebastiano Visconti Prasca to you. Okay. All right, I believe that is all the planning we need to do. So let us go to war. And now time can actually roll by. Yeah. All right. So as we can see here, our troops are just demolishing the Ethiopians. Um, these sort of arrows here just indicate you know what direction our troops are coming from. And if it's green, that means we're winning. And the number, uh, either if we're winning, will slowly count up to 100. Or for losing, it'll be red if it's Go to zero. losing. Exactly. Uh, if we hit 100, then we'll advance towards the next province. If not, then... They have defended. Yes. Winning in some fronts. Up oh, now we're doing better. I also want to assign a, an admiral here. Just to uh, raid any supply convoys that might come through the area. Trying to speed up a bit. Now we play the waiting game. In the meantime, I'll have these troops exercising so that they'll be nice and experienced by the time we put them into action. Yes, yes. Alright, let's see. Have they ready? You need experience in order to get experience. <laughs> exactly. Alright, so. Looks like our oh, yeah. southern front is doing. A little bit worse than our uh, northern front. Yeah, it's fine though. We've pushed so far into the territory. We're right next to the capital of Addis Ababa. So. Yes, that's mm -hmm. true. All right. Now that these guys have made it to the port, we can start planning a naval invasion of Yugoslavia. So. Perfect. We've completely encircled these forces here so that they will be just completely destroyed when we defeat yeah. them. Yeah. Got that one little straggler down there. Yeah. It'll be eliminated soon. In fact, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Just gone. Oh, there we go. Alright. Yugoslavia. Yes. So. I'm going to go over my uh, plan right now whilst our forces in Africa are still pushing. So essentially my plan is once we uh, conquer Ethiopia, we'll unlock the idea uh, Triumph in Africa. Essentially once I complete that idea, then I'll be able to go for the idea... Oh, yeah. Uh-oh, uh-oh. 
Read to the remilitarization of the Rhineland. Germany has stationed troops in the Rhineland territory, close to the French border, in clear violation of the Treaty of Versailles. The local population cheered the German soldiers on, while the diplomatic reactions from France and Britain have so far been muted. It's no more than the Germans walking to their own backyard, a political commentator in Britain observed. Wearing Ethiopian War Logistics. Aha. Alright, so we finished that uh, idea. I don't think I'll study another idea just yet. Since we're like oh, right about to win the war in Ethiopia. So I just wanna you know, what are we with it? We need to uh, waste time. And as you just saw there, time is not on our side. So essentially this is the world tension meter. Essentially, it determines aha, we won. Okay. Ah, wonderful. So we just captured their capital. I'm going to take all their states. Turn, done. And the Treaty of Addis Ababa, we annex all of Ethiopia. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to get these guys to the port of Asmara, and we're going to ship them off to Libya up here. Okay. As for these soldiers, the army, and I'll ship them down here to prepare them for our next assignment. For the next assignment. So I'm going to quickly go over my plan and then uh, move on. So essentially. The world, ten the world tension meter essentially de de determines how uh, charged the political situation is in the world. Um, essentially, the more land that's taken um, and the more wars that are launched, the higher it will go. Mm -hmm. Now, from 0 to 24 percent, it's fine, you know? I mean, you can declare war you want. I mean, frickin' even Ethiopia... It, it, the world tension meter only went up to like three percent. <laughs> Actually, it went down. Um, it, it's a little glitch that I'm guessing they oversaw, because technically speaking, whenever you end a war, world tension does go down a little bit. But a little technically bit, speaking, but... since the game starts you off at war, technically speaking, world tension didn't go up in the first place because yeah, you have to declare war for that to happen. But it's a little glitch, so technically speaking, it actually lowers world tension, which is good for us. Of course, which means we can. So, Plan more stuff. Essentially, what that means is, uh, from when world tension is at zero to twenty-five percent, you know, it's fine. You know, nothing really happens. But when it hits twenty-five percent, that's when shit starts hitting the fan. So essentially, when when we hit twenty-five percent and above, that's when the major powers of France and Great Britain can start guaranteeing the independence of nations. So. Uh, okay, that's always annoying. Whenever, so if I want to say declare war in Yugoslavia, I would justify war goals, uh, select my war goal, and then start uh, fabricating claims. Oops. However, the problem is, if uh, world tensions at 25% are higher, that means that instantly once I start uh, fabricating claims, either Great Britain or France will guarantee their independence. And essentially uh, what that means is, if I declare war on them... You declare war on... Their, Fran uh, France and Britain as well. overseeing country as well. It's just like civilization. Exactly. You're protecting a city-state, you go to war with not only the city-state, but that nation as well, which is always just lovely, which is why yeah. sometimes taking over a city-state and civilization isn't always as good as you think. Exactly. And it's the same thing here, where taking over someone small might not go for... Might not go too great, but anyways, you are sending your troops for a for a naval invasion soon. Yes, and because we're at an extremely low uh, world tension meter, uh, it's perfect. perfect. Essentially, perfect time to do it. Since Yugoslavia is, we're, I hopefully I'm I'm gonna try and take as much land from Yugoslavia as possible, without you know pushing it over the limit, um, and then I'm. I get an idea that just lets me annex Albania without declaring war. So that's good. And then, once that happens, I will declare war and completely seize all of France. More on that in the next episode. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below if you want to see more. Hearts of Iron 4, subscribe to CRG. And most importantly, share this video with all your friends. Also, if you have any recommendations for any nations I should play as, any challenges for me to do, uh, just leave it in the comments below. Yes, please let us know. We are open to all suggestions. Exactly. Thank you. See you in the next one.